Good evening and welcome to our public worship service at St John's Presbyterian Church Annerley with one of our retired pastors, Pastor John Tucker, leading worship on this occasion. Again, your cooperation in utilising the QR code to record your presence is appreciated. Under our present uh, situation, we do commend to you the physical distancing principle and the wearing of a mask where this cannot be accommodated. Of course, as usual, no tithes or offerings will be taken up during worship. Today, we have been celebrating the 136th anniversary of the establishment of this congregation in St John's Annerley. During that time, scores of families have been ministered to through the many avenues within the congregation besides the times of public worship. We consider the Bible studies, ladies' fellowships, Sunday schools and youth groups. Some men nurtured within the congregation were ordained to the eldership and continue to serve within congregations near and far. Others went into full-time ministry, and yet other men and women went into overseas mission service. Records indicate that Elder John Tucker commenced part-time hospital chaplaincy work in 1984 while serving here at St John's, before eventually going on to a significant period of home mission service for the Presbyterian Church of Queensland. It is particularly pleasing to have John leading worship tonight as he celebrates a specific milestone in this coming week, the 65th anniversary of his first preaching opportunity. We rejoice in this milestone and thank the Lord with you for the calling and your commitment to the gospel ministry. As is our habit, we commend to you those of our church family dealing with various trials. Please remember Graham and Marge Ward. They are now living together, more comfortable, uh, yet, uh, unfortunately, their accommodation may not be uh, suitable for long term. So please keep them in your prayers. We think of our Vance family uh, continuing to deal with ongoing health issues. We think of all our church family members in retirement complexes, and we commend those to you who are more particularly and seriously ill. We think of Jean Millard, Michael Knuckler and Bruce Napper. Activities for the coming week, as uh, usual now, Thursday evening will be our Bible study via Zoom. The necessary link can be provided for those who don't have access. Next Saturday, the 20th of November, our prayer meeting as usual, 7.15am in the vestry, followed by a session meeting at 9am in the church. God willing, our public worship services next Sunday, that's the 21st of November, will be as usual. Morning worship led by our own pastor, Reverend Martin Duffield, another of our retired ministry brethren, Reverend Richard Vaughan, leading the evening worship. A quick reminder that our annual congregational prayer morning meeting will be on Saturday morning, the 27th of November. Prayer notes will be available for that morning next Sunday morning. We are now encouraged to engage in personal preparation just prior to the call to worship. Thank you. said it has been a, a real calling to me the ministry I have served in or preached in England Tanzania Kenya Cyprus Thailand and served as a time as the chaplain to the armed forces of America in Vietnam besides about four or five different town cities in Australia. It's been a, a wonderful time for me and I am pleased that the Lord has led me all the way. So I thank Jim and I thank this church 
And in particular, I thank Martin for allowing me to preach here at Annerley. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now worship our God. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 67, where God says to us, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Let peoples praise you, O God. Let all peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Let's come in a time of prayer, a prayer of adoration. Let us pray. Our loving Father in heaven, who has always loved us, and by whose grace we have been saved, we come to you at the close of this blessed Sunday with our evening worship. We thank you for what this day has been to us with its quiet, its sweet home life, its services and its opportunities for ministry. Sanctify to us all these privileges and may their influence follow us all the week. May we be able to bear our burdens more cheerfully, to do our work better, to endure our struggles more victoriously by reason of this Sunday's blessing. We desire to grow in grace, in the knowledge of spiritual things, and whatever things are lovely, may be the results of this day's God's rest and teaching abide in us in quickened spiritual life, in deeper earnestness and in intense hunger and thirst after righteousness. May your words which have been read and heard today stay with us, hidden in our hearts, helping us to live more worthily, May they comfort our sorrow, strengthen our weakness, enrich our knowledge, and brighten our paths for us. Receive us now into your care for the night. Spread over us the sheltering wings of your love, and keep us, for we ask it in Jesus' sake. Amen. Our hymn is Christ for the world we sing.
Our Old Testament lesson comes from Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. Verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. And to God be all the glory. Amen. Let us come in our prayer of confession. O gracious, loving Father, we approach your throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us at this time. Laden with our mountain of sins and conscious of our total inability, Father, knowing that you spared not your only begotten Son, that you may spare us, we come to you for refuge looking to you and striving to learn more and more the riches of your redeeming grace. Give us deep contrition for an erring past. Inspire us with new resolutions for the future. Graciously give us your help and hold us up, Lord, for we feel that this struggling with sin, this conflict with temptation, is a hopeless contest. For without you, without your strengthening, sustaining, and sustaining grace. You have, you have revealed to us yourself to your people in all past ages as a stronghold in the day of trouble and a shield in the day of battle. Be our defence and our glory. Listen to these our humble prayers and when you hear, grant us a blessing that your pardon 
for all our sins and may your answer bring us peace for our Redeemer's sake. Amen. Our hymn is, we have a story to tell to the nation. chapter 17 verses 13 to 22 verse 13 but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world I do not pray that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, 
as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. And again, to God be all the glory. Amen. It is at this point we consider a further act of worship, the giving of our tithes and gifts. For a brief time now, let us reflect on gifts offered either today or online in this past week. This will be followed by a time of prayerful thanksgiving, considering the faithfulness of the Lord toward us. Loving Father in heaven, we give you thanks for all your mercies to us fresh every day and new every morning. We give you thanks that we are able to bring these your tithes and our offerings from the work of our hands, the work that you have given us to do so that your name will be uplifted and your name will be praised throughout the world. Be with us as we look at all the things that surround us all the things that are happening in a world that is so dead, shall we say, to the, to the law of you, your word and to your word alone, where we see so much of the world having no interest in you and having no interest in your word. Be with all our people so that they may know that you are the God who from, from whom we have all the blessings that we need. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next hymn is So Send I You to Labour Unrewarded.
Let's come before the throne of grace where we have our prayer of intercession when we think of others. Loving God, the Father of our Lord Jesus the Christ, trusting in your loving care for all, we bring our prayers for others. We pray for all mankind. Look in compassion on Earth's valley where the bones are very many and very dry. Come from the four winds, O Spirit of the living God. Breathe upon them that they may live. May the wilderness and the solitary place be made glad. May the desert rejoice and blossom as the rose, and all the ends of the earth see your promised salvation. Promised your cause and kingdom everywhere. May a spirit of unity pervade the various varied branches of the church universal. That unity which will be the preparation to the gospel's final triumph, when in answer to the prayer of the great intercessor, his people shall be one and the world will believe. May my dear friends be saved, uniting to you in the bonds of new and better covenant. Quicken them also together with Christ and save them by your grace. Defend them from the temptations of a present evil word and bring them in safety to the everlasting home above. Draw near to every broken and bereaved heart. Give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. We pray for governments that they may rule with wisdom and justice and with respect for their subjects and other nations. We pray for all who suffer in mind or body and for those who care for them. We pray for the sick and the sorrowful, for those without faith, hope or love. We pray for all the nations of the world who like us are suffering from this silent virus. Comfort us all, especially those who have lost loved ones. For all who trust in, is in Christ, Jesus, may they know that no matter what happens, they are in his hands. We pray for those who serve you in other countries. Protect them as they proclaim the gospel of Lord Jesus, that throughout their council, many will be brought to the, into the light of the love of Jesus the Christ. We pray for our families, especially our church family. Protect them, heal their illness. May they all be always be a witness to them. We pray for any known to us who are in special need of our prayers at this, at this time, such as our minister, Martin, and his dear wife, Judy, together with all the others of our church family. Blessed Saviour, Prince of Peace, take to yourself your great power and reign. Hasten the day when by regenerating influences of your gospel, your church triumphant, gathered from in from every kindred, tribe, people and tongue, shall unite in the eternal ascription unto him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hear us, Father, through Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now, Father, as you have given us the Holy Spirit for the purpose of guiding us into all truth and the teaching us the things of Christ so that we might understand the scriptures. May he graciously do so with us so by the entrance of his words we will receive light and by his light we will learn from him today and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was thinking about preaching tonight, there were many things I would like to say. There are many things on my mind, especially the rubbish that we hear about climate change. And we know that cli the climate has been changing ever since Christ created, or God created this earth. And it will continue to change until Christ returns. And no matter what we do, we cannot fix it. Only God can do that. 
And I get upset when I hear people from the Pacific Islands saying that because of the heating of the earth, the, the ice cap's going to melt and our islands are going to be flooded, which only means to know, show that they don't know what God says in his word. For he says in Genesis, I have set the level of the sea, and if he has set the level of the sea, then let me remind you, it cannot and will not go any higher. So as you hear so much about climate change, study our Bible and you will find that the men and science and all this rubbish is not in control. God is and will be until time ends. If I was to ask you as a believer to repeat the Lord's Prayer, you would say the prayer which begins with our Father which art in heaven, for this is universally called the Lord's Prayer. Actually, it's not the Lord's Prayer at all, for Jesus never ever could pray this prayer. For when we look at the contents of the prayer and receive and read, forgive our trespasses, Jesus never ever trespassed the law of God and sinned. It should rightly be called the disciples' prayer, for it was given to them as a pattern of prayer when they asked Jesus to teach them to pray. I believe that the true Lord's Prayer, the one he actually prayed, is in John 17, called his High Priestly Prayer. In the shadow of the cross, our Lord gathers with his disciples in the upper room and in their presence prays this with them and to the Father. So we see in this prayer, firstly, Jesus prays for himself. Secondly, Jesus prays for his disciples. And thirdly, Jesus prays for all believers. It is this second part of the prayer that we will be looking at tonight. His prayer for his disciples and what he wants us as his disciples to do for him in the world. And as you have sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world and for their sakes I set myself apart, and they also might be set apart through the truth. Then he expands his prayer beyond the realm of the disciples who were with him at that moment. Then he said, Neither do I pray for these alone, but for them also who shall believe on me through their word. Who are those, these who will believe because of their, their word? You and me. Some may ask me, are we truly disciples? Yes, we are. For a disciple is someone who follows and learns from a leader. Discipleship involves learning. In our case, because God, because God awakened us by grace and we have been born again, we are disciples of Christ. Christ Jesus. For we are called to learn of Christ and to keep on learning of him throughout our life. The genuine follower of Jesus is enrolled in the school of Christ and learns from him both what to believe and how to live. Discipleship means loving. How can you be closely related to Christ and not sense the bond of fellowship with him and his people? But discipleship also demands living. To belong to Jesus is to live in obedience to the Lord no matter what the cost. Discipleship demands commitment. Such commitment means recognising the absolute priority of Christ in your life. It is also mean experiencing complete conformity to Christ in his death. I know that there are many sermons that can be preached from this chapter However, tonight I just want to centre our thoughts on verses 18 and 19, where we hear, As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. This sanctification includes the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and when God renews us by his spirit and confirms us confirms in us the grace of renewal 
Calvin tells us that the truth by which God sanctifies his sons is not to be found anywhere else than in the word of God, the Bible. And you see, it is only believers who receive the word of God, for it is by receiving the word of God that we are made believers. God's word makes us believers, it sustains us as believers, and it sanctifies us as believers, and to truly be sanctified is to be set apart for God. Why are we set apart? When we are set apart to Christ, we are giving ourselves to a mission, and that mission is to live our lives in such a way that we will truly glorify Christ, which is what being a believer is all about witnessing for and making Christ Jesus known in the world. You see, Jesus does not want his disciples to be statutes on display in church groups, telling of their spiritual powers to one another. We are not to become religious museum pieces. Instead, we are foot soldiers deployed in enemy territory to reach those who are far from God, the lost, whom Jesus himself came to save. Only a believer who is learning of Christ and growing in Christ, growing in grace, can truly be called a disciple of Christ. So where are we to work in this mission? A few years ago at a missionary conference, a young girl came to the speaker and asked him if it was all right to commit suicide. The speaker asked her, why would she ever want to commit suicide? Well, she answered, it was what I learned in Sunday school this morning. We were taught that heaven is a wonderful place. No tears, no fighting, just to be with the Lord. What the young girl was really asking is, why are we in this world anyway? If it is such a sin-cursed place and heaven is such a blessed home, why do we have to stay here? The speaker answered her by saying, we are in God's world that through our testimony, our life and by his word, we might have the privilege of bringing other lost people to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believers are not people who have just decided to live differently than other people in the world. Believers are born again their identity is in Christ, it's in Jesus, who though he is not of the world, came in the world to save his people. He does not merely leave us in the world, but sends us into it. As we find in Matthew's Gospel, this is an authoritative command. It is his authority that sends us, his authority that guides us, and his authority that empowers us to witness to the truth and faithfulness of God. We are not merely to remain in the world because there is no way we can leave it. We are sent out into the world to accomplish the Father's will and purpose. Believers are set apart for God from the world. However, our mission is in the world and that mission is to magnify the glory of Christ by being disciples who make disciples. God's people are created by the power of his word, which is what Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones illustrates to us. In Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel proclaims God's word in a valley of dry bones, essentially in a graveyard. And the dead come to life. And this is what God's word, by God's grace, through the power of God's spirit, still does today. Just as Ezekiel proclaimed the, God's word to the dead, so likewise, we who are dead in our trespasses and sins, until we are confronted with God's word and by its power, we are born again. We were dead, but now alive. When we evangelize, we are evangelizing in a graveyard. For the world is dead in its trespasses and sins. That is why it hates us. But God, in and through his word and by the power of the Holy Spirit causes the dead to live. Think of why Jesus came and for what purpose he sends us into the world. 
Jesus did not come as a philosopher like Plato or Aristotle, though he knew higher philosophy than them all. Jesus did not come as an inventor or a discoverer, though he could have invented new things and discovered new lands. Jesus did not come as a conqueror, though he was mightier than Alexander or Caesar. Jesus came to teach. Jesus came to live amongst us. Jesus came to suffer for truth and righteousness. Jesus came to rescue us. The Lord's disciples are drawn from all nations that they may learn what he teaches and obey all that he commands. Discipleship demands a life of commitment. The important thing is that whosoever desires to follow Christ must be inwardly free from worldly mindedness, covetousness and selfishness and be wholly devoted to him. With an understanding of our role in the world, how can we be how can we be the answer? We can be the answer to Jesus' prayer by being. We are separated from sin, but not isolated from sinners. We are to be in the world seeking the lost. We are to have contact with the world without being contaminated by the world. We maintain a delicate balance between separation from the world and penetration of the world. We are to pray for the protection as we penetrate the world. There is a story told of Henry, Henry Stanley who went from London to Africa to look for Dr La David Livingstone, the famous Scottish missionary from whom nothing had been heard for, 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 month, from, for months. Eventually he found him. He spent four months having daily fellowship with him, observing the total dedication of his life to the Lord, noting his prayer life, his deep concern for, the, concern for the souls of the natives, his love and compassion towards them, and because of this, Stanley came to Christ. Coming back to London, he said, I went to Africa as a prejudiced and the biggest atheist in London. And then he explained his conversion. It was not the preaching of Livingston, Livingston that won me. It was Livingston living that won me. We who are true believers cannot be hid. We cannot escape notice. If we are truly living and functioning as believers, we will stand out. We will be like salt. We will be like a city set on a hill, a candlestick set upon a, a candle set upon a candlestick. However, we can also add this further word. The true believer does not even desire to hide his light. He sees how ridiculous it is to, be, to claim to be a believer and yet deliberately to try to hide the fact. Anyone who knows, who truly knows what it means to be a believer certainly knows that all the grace of God has been to him and done for him and understands that ultimately, un uh, ultimately God has done all this in order that he may be an influence to others and he cannot conceal it. We, who are true believers, must live in the world, uplift Christ so that all who look to him will indeed be saved. And believers must also remember, as I've said so many times, you may be the only Bible that people read. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, be with us in every experience of life. When we neglect you, remind us of your presence. When we are frightened, give us courage. When we are tempted, give us power to resist. And when we are anxious and worried, give us peace. When we are weary in your service, give us energy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is, I love to tell the story of unseen things above.
Gracious Father, as you take us under your care and keeping, we will both lie down in peace and sleep for you. Alone make us, make us dwell in safety, and as we go to our appointed work, walking by your side, leaning on your arm, may we be a blessing to all around us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all until Christ Jesus comes again.